This is Allie. And this is David. And you're listening to For, For the, the Culture. Culture. I tell them take a picture, man. It'll last longer. Hit the gas on them. Hit the dance on them. Take no chance on them. Get the cash on them. Flip it fast on them. Take off the mask on them. Show the world who you are. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's going on? Hi, guys. I feel like I should have a corny intro where I'm like, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I don't know if I would do a corny intro. No, that sounds like the horn from dance hall music. Yeah. <laughs> I do that. Uh, yeah, I'm coming up like that. <laughs> We should come up. We should come up with something so that it could be our own respective intros. Yeah, we'll figure. We'll yeah. Figure something out. <laughs> so, what is going on with you today? What is well? I have a trip coming up. Okay. Actually, tomorrow, and I am getting to go to Australia. Wow, that's a, that's a long way away. It really is. I want to say the first leg is. 10, 12 hours. Mm-hmm. My layover is in Dubai. And then the next leg is another 10, 12 hours. That's insane. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you get layovers because your plane might not be going to the place you're going Yeah. To. You're getting a layover because they need to put gas in it. So yeah. Like, That's crazy. <laughs> and then my layover is 15 hours. So I'm trying to decide, do I leave the airport, visit the city, I don't know how I don't know how that works. Yeah, because I don't know how that works. You would have to get your passport stamped there. Okay. To go off into the city. Yeah. Then I, there's like, how long are you staying they, in our country? Yeah. Fifteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know why in my mind I have like this this taken experience is gonna happen where because I've never I've never been there before. So in my mind, this taken experience is gonna happen and yeah, I'm then your husband exactly phone phone. <laughs> I know who you are and I will find you. <laughs> I will get my alley back. I can see that. I can see that happening. I think that's a compliment where he, you know, he's bold enough and courageous enough to take on whoever it was that God forbid kidnapped me. I think I think he would be on the I think he'd be on the first plane out. <laughs> he'd be strapped up, you know. Like. So this opportunity, it came up because a young lady in our church, she is a track star. And yes. we are all praying and knowing that God is going to get her to the Olympics. And so her and some of her other teammates, they're doing an international track meet in Australia. And her parents, they won't be able to take the time off to go. And I ain't got no real job. So (laughs) I asked if I could be, you know, a chaperone. And her mom was like, really? Is that like, are you sure? Is that something you really want to do? I was like, of course that's something yeah, I want to do. I here with a bunch of 18 <laughs> to Australia. But it's not like I'm going to be hanging out with all of them. I'm just, no. It's just going to be me and her. It's just going to be me and her. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm nervous, though, because they say that everything in Australia can kill you. Like the ants, the spiders, the <laughs> wildlife. Can kill you. I mean, that's, just what, that's what the world is. You live in the city and you don't think about it, but then you see that spider crawling down from the ceiling. There's things everywhere. But see. they make it seem like it's it's exponential, like but it's people exaggerated. Live there. People live there. because and now they're immune. They're, they're probably immune. they're probably superhuman loop cage type of people. Yeah, where immune. when venomous immune. snakes and spiders come out, they're like whatever. Nah, we're we're they're good. Not immune. And I'm not even going to try to imitate <laughs> an Aussie accent. I'm not. I'm not going to embarrass myself like that. <laughs> not on air. Not, no, on, not air. on air. I'm not going to embarrass myself I'm not trying to get like that. that. Email. So before before we actually started recording, we were talking about it, and I was a little hesitant to bring it up because I wasn't sure if me talking about traveling would come off as as bragging, and I I don't want to make it seem as if I'm out here flossing and I take flights all the time. And so I just want to know, is it like, is it okay? Is this a topic that I could bring up and share? Well, that's the thing about people with, with, with things like this. 
it could come out across as bragging if you're saying like, yo, I get to travel all over the world. You know, uh-huh. I'm in Germany now. Yeah. I'm from New York. I, yeah. you know, I just came from Colorado. Uh- <laughs> I went out to um, wherever I went. Canary <laughs> Island. So if you're like that and you're just talking about where you've been and where you're going, yeah, it sounds like bragging. But yeah. Some people genuinely just love to travel. And that's me. Right. I have a cousin. And I, she had, she does have a, have a job. She's a nurse in mm-hmm. California. Yeah. And every time I see her Instagram, she's somewhere else. Somewhere else. She's yeah. In Dubai, she's yeah. in Japan. She's in Hong Kong. Yeah. And she's not bragging. That's what she loves to do. Yeah. And and she goes out there and she assists with different things. With yeah. Different charities. But she loves to travel. So mm-hmm. for her to go to these different places is not bragging. It's just living doing her what life. You love. Yeah, living her life. Absolutely. Okay. Cause I I'm not trying to put anybody down, you know. There's some people that they they can't afford, they can't take the time off, or whatever it is that hinders them. And I've just been so blessed to be able to to do this, and so I'm just really blessing. grateful. Okay. Never hide your blessing. Okay. You, you don't have to flaunt your blessing, but you don't have to hide your blessing. Okay. So. All right. I am hyped though. I'm really hyped. I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be tired. I'm gonna be so tired. But I'm hyped. I'm really excited. Well, in this week in the world, this was a very, very, very slow <laughs> entertainment week. It really was. So we didn't really have any beefs. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple lines on this Drake freestyle, but that's not even yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> and it's just, it was a weak week. Yeah. <laughs> it was a weak week. You know, it was a weak week. <laughs> And so we we tried we sat down in our in our in our pre meeting just trying to figure out what to talk yeah about. what are we gonna bring up and I, I, I'm not talking about people's kids I don't, I, don't I I wanted to talk about the kids so I'm I'm gonna just say it briefly it's not gonna be a discussion uh, but congratulations to the Curry Stefan and Aisha they just welcomed their baby boy they already have two girls and so this is their third child Cannon and then also Tia and Corey Hardrick they welcomed a baby girl so. Yeah, and then if you listened to my mini pod last week, you would know that Remy Ma and Papoose, they're expecting, so. Okay, now that's out the way. <laughs> so, no, I'm playing. No, I mean, it's just not something that I really You wanted to delve about, into? You know? Yeah, it's okay. I, like, it's all I right. I skip people's kids on Facebook. <laughs> I don't, I don't, because I don't care to see your child. Oh, I, I'd rather wow. be around your child and they can do things. What you mean, like play the piano no, or play, like play the piano? You know? <laughs> entertain me, you know. <laughs> dance for you me. Know, they, getting out here in the middle of the party and, and dance. dance. <laughs> I don't know, who do they dance like now? You know, when we were growing up, like they go down here and dance like Michael Jackson. They get down. Well, here they and, do the the, the single now? dance. No, they do the single dances that are popular, uh, like know, like, like dabbing dance. or. Um, what's the other one? Um, what's that you could like this when you round your hands around? Know. Millie Rock. Oh. That's another well, one. I think you are out of date right now. I, think I am. I, I Those think are old. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mad out of date right now, but I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and jump back into me not liking to see people's kids. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like the. I don't want to get online and see pictures of your child. I don't care to see pictures of your child. What? Your child only looks beautiful to you. Children I, are blessings from God. Yes, they are, and they're your blessing <laughs> to God. Don't flaunt it. Appreciate it. It's like we were just talking about earlier. Wait, so when you guys finally have, you're not going to have a bunch of pictures? You're not going to have photos? Fo- you're going to tell I'm me you're not going to have photo shoots I'm a for your baby? And I will have the photos for myself. Yeah. They will be in my home. They will yeah. be here. I'm not, I don't care to post it online. I don't care. Like, I want to be able to see cousins and they'll be like, oh, you have a kid? Yeah, he's 14. I want to be what? at that point. Yes. Wait, why would you want it to be so long before your family even knows? No, 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 no. I said a cousin. I don't know why I'm, I got a lot of cousins. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of cousins that I don't even, I've never met. Well, but uh, I'm talking about a family union. Like, I didn't even know you had a kid. No, you didn't because I didn't show my kid to everybody because it's not their business. Oh my god! Well, can you at least post for me? Because we we were gonna we're gonna be well, gone I'll soon. Text you? That's easy. Like we can I can text you. That's different. I can send you a photo. I'm not I'm not posting it online. I don't want to post my children online because I want to see when they start laughing and when they start walking. You are not about to meme my son. I'm, I'm not. Just I'm not gonna meme you. I'm talking oh, about the world. The world. You're not about to meme my son. I don't know what he gonna look like, but you're not about to meme. If adorable. You got my ears, oh, adorable. If you got my ears, he's on one. You're not about to meme that little big ear boy. I'm telling you. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what? I will say that I respect that you want to protect your child. Yeah, just like Drake wanted to. But no, everybody <laughs> wanted to go crazy. <laughs> because I think we talked about this before, about people wanting to know more about celebrities. Like, there's no, there's no line anymore. There's no line between their persona, right. their public persona, and then their personal life. But it's there, like, no, I need everything. Are. But some there are. And like we were talking about before, it depends on what height and how you present yourself. Yeah. So I said before that if you want to be a big star, you have to present yourself that way, mm-hmm. which I was wrong. I went back and reevaluated and I was wrong in that fact. Mm-hmm. I want to say that if you present a persona of someone who is completely relatable, mm-hmm. then at that moment, you do have to portray that at all times. Okay, so make sure you stay true to who you have shown. Right, because okay. look at like Drake is the most relatable artist mm-hmm. that's at his level. You think so? With that amount of money, with, with oh, the amount of money he, oh, he has is. and the things that he does, all his music has been relatable to okay. everybody. Okay. It's not, uh, this is the cars I drive, this is the, the house we own. The These drugs the I've been something. pushing. It's, it's, yeah. it's not like that. Mm-hmm. So it's not like the new Jay-Z and Beyonce album. <laughs> That's what they did the whole album. But it's not like that. He's yeah. been relatable. Mm-hmm. So he has to present relatability. So when he didn't show his child to the world, mm. people felt that he was presenting a false persona of his relatability. Okay. So at that point, he's saying that, okay, um, I'm only letting y'all into what I want to let y'all into. And yeah. people don't respect it. So you think that it was about, hey, we know you to to feel close to you. And why are you holding this out on us? As opposed to, we need to know everything. This is the age of social media. And you right. need to show us everything. There's, I think there's people on both sides of that. Okay. There's people on both sides of that. And the people who... And a lot of people who are on that negative side of that mm-hmm. actually feel the positive way, but don't know how to put it into words. Wait, what? They actually feel that he should have been relatable to them. Mm-hmm. They can't put that emotion into words. Okay. So what they can put into words is that you should tell us everything. Okay. All right. I can understand that because sometimes my how I'm feeling, I don't know how to express that so I can shut down or I get angry. Right. So I, I can understand there's a, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Right, right, Well, right. Th- isn't it in one of his newer songs that he actually said, yes, the the boy is mine? Right, <laughs> he did. He, wow. We're back to Brandy like, and how I, like how I did that, right? We're back to Brandy and <laughs> or what was that? What was the Billie Jean song? Well, um, Michael Jackson? Billie Jean, Billie Jean is not my lover. Not my lover. He's just, just a, a girl who says that I am the one. It's hilarious. He's now just coming together the right here. The kid is not my son. Because I couldn't remember that reference first. So oh. that's why I said the boy is mine. Because that line just came to oh, me. Okay. But I couldn't remember. I was like, whereas we have Michael denying it, saying that yeah. the kid is not my son. We have him over here actually acknowledging. Yeah, he, ain't, he was going to acknowledge it. If the whole, How do you know? If the whole Adidas line was going to be called added on. Oh, Okay. If the Adidas line was going to be named after his son, mm-hmm. what, what, what else can we say? He wasn't, he, like he said, he said in the song, I wasn't trying to hide my son from the world. I'm trying to hide the world from my son. Mm. He didn't want, because think about it, you can, Drake can't do anything in this world without mm. a thousand cameras on him. Yeah. He can't sit down and have a dinner with someone without it blowing up on Twitter. Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't, like I said, with me personally, no, I'm not going to put pictures of my kids out there mm-hmm. for people to fawn over and talk about and ask about and try to mm-hmm. insert themselves into my life yeah. because, like, oh, I see your kids wearing a pamper. He should be wearing cloth diapers. That's not your business. Business, yeah. It's not. It's not our business. What Drake does with his child, mm-hmm. it, and that's and that's how I feel. So I think that we have to create that separation. When we can, we can, mm-hmm. we. He said what he said. He did what he did in yeah. protection of his child. So yeah. So you just think, hey, eventually he would have come out about it, but he just wanted to do it in his own time. Right. Okay. And that I can respect because he's he's still a person and his child shouldn't have to be subjected to the life of fame just because he is. I think Halle Berry was working on getting some type of legislature put into place where, okay, yeah, the paparazzi will follow around the adults and those who have accepted a life of fame but leave the kids out of it. Right. I don't know if, if she ever was successful in that, but I, I, actually, I, I believe that that's a good that's a good approach and that's a good thing that she was pushing for. And like, yeah. like look at, like you were saying before, you were talking about um, 
Beyonce and Jay Z, when we were mm. talking about it before, how they don't give us everything. They yeah. don't give us complete mm -hmm. autonomy in their life. But the fact is, I think they've reached a point where they don't have to. Mm -hmm. But did you listen to the newest album? I didn't, but I did go to the concert the other day, which is kind of funny because right. maybe I should have listened to it. But, but they played most of the songs that I already knew. I want to mm -hmm. say only two or three of their songs were from their most recent album. So I was like, okay, good. I can sing yeah. along. <laughs> and um, I think that like with them, it's just, it's a really weird situation with them. Like where they are in their celeb status? No, weird as in the music they're putting out. Oh, I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Right. I think it's really, it's not them showing their immense talent. Mm -hmm. It's them showing the world right now that everything that you're doing right now, we can do also and do it better. Yeah. Because they got songs, some neo hip hop songs, mm -hmm. and it has a totally different feel. It has that. That, that feel of those artists who are out there now, yeah. like her and like Daniel Caesar with rap on top of it mm -hmm. and conscious rap on top of it. It's just so all these different things. And it's just pretty much like like a kick in the face to all the people doing it right now. Like, yo, I can still do that also. Mm. Like they're trying to maintain this diva status for Beyonce. And I get it because, mm -hmm. and it, it, I think it's because of the world. What do you mean? Like they are, they're expecting that from her or? I think they're, they're right now they're, watching her so closely hoping that she fails because you got to think what just mm. happened so publicly jay-z came out and told the world that he mm -hmm. cheated on his wife yeah. and that and that he apologized and they're working on things and getting mm -hmm. back together and beyonce comes back to jay-z after this mm -hmm. now every there's a bunch of people out there in the world like, mm -hmm. you should have left him, mm -hmm. he should be this, inserting themselves again into mm -hmm. a situation that doesn't belong to them. Mm -hmm. And with that, so she has to show that, because people don't realize that when you are strong enough to go through something with somebody, mm -hmm. that it's harder than to just walk away. Yeah. But the benefit is better. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that the world doesn't see that. So she now has to put on this tough persona yeah. as well mm -hmm. to show that, yeah, I took him back, but I'm still the baddest out here. Yeah. But you don't think that they, they're taking their misery and their pain and then profiting off of it? Again, they, like you said, with the celebrities, they chose to be in that light. They mm -hmm. chose to be in there. And every artist, every musician knows that you create your art out of your pain or things that you've gone through. Mm, okay. And, and that's just how they are dealing with what yeah, they're going through. Yeah, you're right. Because as soon as you said that, it made me think about Adele and Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. where their songs are about heartbreak. And how is that any different than what they're doing, where right. they're talking about their heartbreak, they're making songs, they're making art from about their heartbreak and making money off of it. Yeah. So what's the difference? Yeah, there isn't one. Yeah. And I, I remember reading this, this article on Cracked. It's like a, it's sort of related to BuzzFeed, mm -hmm. but they'll give you like random facts right. too. I, I, it's an old school website. I don't know if it's still popular today. But anyway, they were talking about why people are obsessed with X, Y, and Z. So if you're obsessed with a particular movie franchise, if you're obsessed with an artist, it's because that's their intent. Their intent is to get us to a point where we are obsessed with them and we feel ownership over that movie, that artist, that TV show. And then that's when the negative starts happening where if you want to talk badly about this franchise or you want to do something that is not how I think it should be like they they appointed that asian american actress i want to say her last name is tran into the one of the newer star wars films and you know some of the the fans they went into you know oh my goodness how could they do that like this is not a good representation and the, the article was just basically saying that how can you blame people or how can you be surprised? I can't say how could you blame people. How can you be surprised that you have people that want to attack and get so possessive over these things that are in our faces all the time when that's their intent? Their motive is to get you to a point where you're so obsessed with it that you want to invest your time and your money and your effort into this. But then I think that's a slippery slope. You can say that's their intent, but at the same time, it's their intent to create the greatest piece of art that they can create. Mm -hmm. And art moves people. Art 
defines who we are as we grow. Mm-hmm. The TV shows and the in the movies and the books that we read mm-hmm. define who we are today. Mm-hmm. I don't think this whole generation would be who they are without the Lion King. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think that regard I think that is a byproduct is the is getting people hooked on it is a byproduct of creating something great. So you think it's an afterthought. You don't think that from the beginning of any type of conception of an idea, they're like, we need to make sure that people are hooked. You don't think that was no because okay. I, because I think somebody mm-hmm. might be because there's different levels of creation. Yeah. So you have the writer, mm-hmm. you have the person who's going to put it. You have your director, your mm-hmm. producer who's going to put it in the film. Mm-hmm. But then you also have a business person who's working with you. Yeah. Who has to find a way to pay for that. So maybe their intent mm-hmm. is to is to get people hooked on it, mm-hmm. but they don't have autonomy over the the uh, piece of artwork. Yeah. So. I think that there might be a little bit of that in there, but mm-hmm. I don't think people's intent is to just hook people. Okay. I think that is create the greatest piece of art that you can create at that time. If you say so. <laughs> but I, I think that they their intent is to get you hooked and to get you upset, obsessed and to keep you coming back for more. Okay, here's the thing. If, if somebody were to give you... I think I can't remember what show it was in, but they gave you everything you wanted mm-hmm. on a platter, but nothing that you needed, mm-hmm. and you would never go with that everything you wanted, or you would get sick of mm-hmm. the, everything you wanted. Mm-hmm. Now these movie franchises or these musicians, these mm-hmm. artists, they have to be giving something you need as well. Mm-hmm. So it got to be something you want mm-hmm. and something you need because if you didn't need it or you didn't have that love for it, you wouldn't come you back wouldn't come anyway. Back. Even if they're trying to drive this home that they want you yeah. to stick around. If you didn't actually love the art, you wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be there. Okay. So. All right. All right. All right. What else we got well, going on? Well, speaking of, I guess we can move on speaking about art and talk about the Essence Festival. Yes. The Essence Festival is a festival in New Orleans that happens every year. They were talking about having one in Africa. You remember that? No. Yeah, it was, they were talking about it to having one that's going to be like another Essence Festival that's going to start happening in Africa as Ooh. well. I remember seeing I it. Like I remember that looking idea. it up. Um, but the Essence Festival just went on, and that's the biggest group of black people <laughs> in one city wearing Steve Harvey suits <laughs> that I think you can find. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had I had family go. I have family from Texas and Louisiana, so they just went. To, they went to the Essence Festival. Yeah, I, I saw it on Snapchat and Twitter yeah. and and everybody's posts. I've never been, but I'm the type of person I tend to avoid large crowds. Mm-hmm. I know that's that's weird and kind of hard to do sometimes, but I don't know. It's something about it. I'm just like, is this really an experience that that I have to go through? Is this like yeah, every it, it's. So it's the grown folks coming of passage. So when <laughs> like like before my time when it was high, people who used young folks used to go to what was it uh, in Atlanta? Freaknik. Freaknik. They went to Freaknik. That yeah, was their coming. But that was explicit. But that was though. I said young folks, was, and that's yeah. what they did. They okay. Young. Now when you grown and you start getting some sense about you, yeah. those same people were going to Essence Festival. Oh, okay. And they were, and it, you get jazz, you get R and B, you get soul, you get some, you get some hip hop and rap and mm-hmm. things like that. But you have this culture of experience there. You have okay. an old, old city yeah. that has history and mm-hmm. culture all the way back to slavery and, yeah. and, and everything that you could think of. Mm-hmm. So I think that going to Essence is this, this coming together of these black souls and, mm-hmm. and people and energies that yeah. just you can't. You okay, can't I'll, I'll put it on my bucket list because I've yeah. been to New Orleans before because I was I went to school in Mississippi for a while, mm-hmm. so you know it's a short drive yeah. over to Louisiana. Um, but I had I've never been to to Essence Festival, so okay, I'll check it out. I'll check yeah, it out. It's a, it's a nice trip. Yeah, South by Southwest is nice too, but it doesn't have the same feel because mm-hmm. it's not the black experience that you have mm-hmm. at Essence. Well, I think that. That's about to change, isn't it? Because with Beyonce performing at the last one, maybe the artists that are premiered at South by Southwest might change. No, nah, Beyonce is not going to change a a pattern like that. She's you too don't big know. No, she's too big at this point, so it doesn't matter. Wait, wouldn't the fact that she is a large artist help to 
to mold where it depends could on, go? I think it depends on how big you are. Like, so Beyonce is so big that, so let's say it is, has, if there's a racist agenda behind it. And we're saying, what? no, 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 okay. you said All because, right. like you said, that what we said, because okay. they haven't had black people perform, perform on those stages. Uh -huh. There has to be a reason. There's plenty of black artists that have been available or, been, or to headline mm -hmm. this. There's plenty of artists that's outsold mm -hmm. other artists that could headline this. So let's say it's a racist agenda mm -hmm. just for that reason. And Beyonce is so big that people look past racism when it comes to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. They do. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. People are like, oh, I hate you, N-word, but I love Beyonce. <laughs> you know, it's like that. <laughs> and, pe and that's what people will do. Uh -huh. But let's say we had an artist like SZA. Mm -hmm. She headlines. It's a different story. She's not as big. Mm -hmm. She's not as as influential. Mm -hmm. and, and she's not loved on both sides of the street. Mm-hmm. If a Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj is even at a point to where she's so out of the, was it the fairy tale of Beyonce that it would, or Cardi B, mm -hmm. to where this realness is up there, they're not going to let them headline it. Okay. So you're saying the only reason that she, that Beyonce was invited is because of her status. Because of her status. So that, and that's it. That's the end of it. Like, we don't I, no, know. I would say at the end of it, I think we'll get other people, but yeah. I think it's not. If the if the agenda was based on a racist agenda, Beyonce would not change that agenda. Okay. Unless they're using Beyonce as a way to open the door. And that's what I want to believe. And, and, and I see that. Now they're yeah. saying that we can get other black artists. So we're going to do is we're going to bypass this whole agenda we had in the past. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start this with a big headliner and let it be Beyonce. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, op she open the she can open the door. I don't think that she can open the door. I think they'll allow her to. She can open. How are we not saying this? How are we not saying the same it's thing? Totally different because by saying, like I said before, by saying she can open the door, uh -huh. then she could be the individual that made the change. Okay. By saying they'll allow her to means they made the change and they're using her as a pawn. As a, at, as a pawn. I, I just I think and I think it just becomes for the fact that it's. A status thing because okay. it's there's not very many Beyonces, so okay. you could have one Beyonce up there, mm -hmm. and then next year you have somebody at that stature. There's no other black artists yeah. right now at that stature, so yeah. then you're going over to the people that are at that stature in other genres. So you get your Taylor Swifts, mm -hmm. you get your whoever's in country right now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You yeah. get you get those artists. So if you're on that stature level, but if you're as a black artist, it's mm -hmm. totally different. Okay, I will agree that that the paths are different for us for yeah. people that look like us. Okay, I'll agree. I'll agree. So, what was uh, a couple of things that happened at the the Essence Festival that piqued your interest? Well, there was this year that um, a marriage panel. A marriage panel goes on every year at Essence Festival, and it's usually sat by women. Mm -hmm. Women are the panelists. Women are the, are the people who are who are opening the floor up for mm -hmm. questions and. And everything in the main speaker. This year, it was completely done by men. Oh, the wow. Vail Ellis. He is a um, an Instagram star, or yeah, Instagram, and a, social media, and a vlogger, and yeah. a vlogger, yeah. And he helped host the marriage, mm -hmm. the uh, marriage panel this year. Like I said, it's usually only set by women. This year was all set completely by men. I like that. And it's a different look. You get to see men standing up for marriage. You yeah. get to see men showing that. That there's real men out in the world who are married, who are being married, who fighting are for their marriages, marriage, who are fighting for their marriage. Yeah, that's really nice. And I really like him and his family, him and his wife, Kadeen. I found them because another YouTuber that I watch, um, she was just doing like a chit chat video, and someone in the comments mentioned that Kadeen had just done a home birth. And so I started watching their videos, and they have th three boys now. Either three or four. I'm so sorry if I made three a mistake. It's three, yeah, they have three boys now, and they're just the, the cutest family. Kadeen is of Jamaican heritage, and they reside in Brooklyn. And yeah, they just they go at each other, but in a sarcastic, funny way. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I just I love them. They're they're adorable, and I love that they're open about 
the struggles that they have been through. Right. And he was a professional football player. And at one point he was addicted to pain medication. Mm. And that was something that, you know, he had to get over. He was in depression. And I just love that they talk about real issues and how they overcame it together. And so, so when you mentioned that he was one of the panelists, I'm like, that's perfect yeah. because he's a strong advocate for love, for marriage, and for fighting as a couple together, right. in, like on the same direction. There's a lot of things yeah. going on right now. There's also a show, I'm not sure if it's just online or if it's actually a TV show called Man Cave, mm -hmm. to where it's again, it's brothers talking about different situations they've been in. Mm -hmm. They'll bring over, they bring on different stars and things mm -hmm. like that. I know Steve Harvey was on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just pretty much just talking about the male side of marriage and relationships mm -hmm. that you never get to hear, hear because yeah. we always hear about the, 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 um, the feminine side of yeah. the relationship. Yeah. So that it changes nice. things. Yeah. I really like that. So Tyler Perry, again with Tyler Perry, he bought Tiffany Haddish a Tesla. Isn't that sweet? I don't think it matters. I don't know what it means because him and his significant other, and I say significant other because I'm not sure if they're married, mm -hmm. but him and his significant other, they have a child together. Is she going to be okay with him buying a car? For but it depends on what it is. Don't forget, Tyler Perry is the CEO and owner of Tyler mm -hmm. Perry Productions or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And he is over that. She is an employee of yes. that of his company. Yes. So what if it was a bonus? What if yeah. it was any number of things? Yeah. Now, if he, we don't know if he just went out and handed her the keys, if he gave the keys to her agent, her agent gave it to her. Yeah. We don't know these situations. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Well, from the video that he posted, it was about rewarding her. It was a gift to say, like, you have been putting in the work. Right. You have really been putting in the work for your career to make a name for yourself, and you are basically a talented woman, and here you go. And she it's funny because she was on the Ellen show, and they promised to let her use a Tesla for a week. And in her Instagram post, she was like, you know, I'm still waiting on that week, one week <laughs> rental from the Ellen show. So for she was like, I'm a little skeptical about whether or not this is real. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't blame her. But I do think that if it's if it's just about, hey, rewarding her for being a great employee, for being a great actress, a great team player, then. Right. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm Tesla okay with that. Tesla only costs. I'm saying only in the in the in derivative of him mm -hmm. only costs around a hundred to a hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That is a drop in the bucket for, for Tyler him. Perry. Okay. So that's like giving a waitress a tip. Okay. To Tyler Perry, a hundred dollar tip here. Yeah. It's gonna hurt him at that level. That that much. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's not. And then he probably bought it through the company mm -hmm. because that's what it was for. Oh, so it could be a tax write-off? And, and, and even <laughs> though everybody, a tax write-off does not mean that you just get free money. That's not <laughs> what it means. It means it, it goes towards taking down your deductible. People think that yeah. you just get free money when you write stuff off. <laughs> like, I gave $500 million. Now I'm getting that $500 million back. No. That's not how it works. Yeah. But... <laughs> No, it, it will be a tax write-off, though. It'll be something, and in it, in it will go towards his expenses. So he yeah. even buy it out of his own pocket. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see an issue with it. Yeah. People were wondering if him reaching out to her and giving her this gift, if it was kind of a dig at Monique, because I don't know if you saw or heard the the video, or I should say the audio. So apparently, Monique recorded a conversation with her and Tyler Perry and her husband, Sydney. They, so the three of them were on the phone and as I'm listening to the audio, what it sounds like is they're trying, Monique and Sydney are trying to get Tyler to say, Hey, you were in the wrong about what happened, what went down with Lee Daniels and what are you going to do to make it up to me? Mm -hmm. And so Tyler was just like, okay, yes, I agree. The way things went, it was a little sour. What can we do? Can we, you know, get your name back out there? And they're like, nah, that's not really enough. Can we get you some money? Mm, nah, that's not really enough. And, you know, they were just going back and forth. And to me, Tyler seemed like he was very genuine about what he wanted to do to make amends. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like it just wasn't enough for Monique and Sydney. And so I wonder if him reaching out and acknowledging Tiffany's hard work, it's like, hey, 
this could be you. This could be you. I can you. see that. I can see that. <laughs> and I don't think it was a direct dig at her, but to mm-hmm. say that, to, I think it's evidence that shows that when you act right, things happen for you. Yeah. And 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 I hate this. No, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going there. But right. Monique is an individual that I feel is in the wrong in a lot of ways mm-hmm. with the way she is putting herself out there mm. because, and I'm not saying be anybody else, but you, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that you have to be a jerk, a jerk. <laughs> you don't have to be over, an overt, angry, yeah. arrogant person. Yeah. You, it, you're going to, you're not your own person. You don't, you're not the center of the universe to where mm-hmm. you can handle every bit of your business by yourself. Yeah. You don't own a network. You don't, mm-hmm. Own, you don't own the platforms for yourself, so you yeah. have to work with for, others. No, yeah. For. Oh, That's okay. Uh, you have to be able to work for somebody else. You mm-hmm. have to be able to work under somebody else to show that you can lead other people. Yeah. And that's what happens. And I'm not saying that everybody should work under somebody, mm-hmm. but in the situation she's in, she has to. Yeah. And if she doesn't want to do that, then take your money that you do have. Mm-hmm. Take anything that you can get, any loan that you can get, and create your own platform. And start something. Jay-Z I'm surprised created title. that she hasn't, hasn't started that by now. Because if... All of these things are happening where she feels like, hey, the way these industry heads are not, they're not doing it the right way. Why don't you start something and do it the right way so that people who are coming up behind you, especially you say you want to be an advocate for black females, you know, start something yourself. Right. But I don't think she will. What I think is that she is waiting on someone else to start that initiative Mm -hmm. so she can attach her name to To it. it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel that what's going on. I think she's trying to, she's building up all this uprise and people who are talented at those things. Mm -hmm. And the story will be that I was sitting at home watching E! News and I heard what happened to Monique and I just, I felt rallied. (laughs) I wanted to get up and I wanted to create a platform to where this doesn't happen to any of our women out here again. And that is great. And that's perfect that it helped that out with somebody. But when Monique is sitting there waiting to say, hey, you put my name on that if you want. (laughs) Give me give me fifty percent of the profits and and, and give me ownership. Yeah. Uh you didn't do anything. (laughs) And and I think that's what she wants to be. I think she wants to be that person. So she's gonna get all the dirt and everybody talking about how everybody did her wrong. Because if someone's genuinely trying to help you in the situation yeah. and you're just egging them on just to see how far yeah. they'll go, then you are misrepresenting yourself in that situation. So do you think she should let it go? Cause like because it's just like her name has been drugged through the mud mm-hmm. and she's trying to clear her name. Can you be mad at her for trying to clear her? She's trying to clear her name. She is not trying to clear her name. She is trying to rant and rave until everybody agrees with her. That's not the same thing. Uh, that everybody will understand what she has been through. No, people understand the plight that she talks about mm-hmm. going through. Everybody understands the plight of, well, I'm not saying everybody. There's a lot of people who don't in, in get this it. situation <laughs> who understand the plight of women, black women mm-hmm. in the industry. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they also see that that's not the situation she went through. With the evidence of everything that happened mm-hmm. and how it happened, mm-hmm. that's not what she went through. Okay, so there was a video that came out where Damon Dash confronted Lee Daniels. Right. Because he gave him, I should say, let me be more specific, Dame Dash gave Lee Daniels $2 million for a project. Right. And, you know, they went through a legal battle, and this was even before Precious came out. So we're talking mm-hmm. about like 2000, 2010, 2012 era. Well, the legal battle was after Precious. The, yeah, the legal battle was afterwards, but that was how long ago he had given him the money. Right. And so he confronted him at this charity auction, and he's like, listen, we've we've been through it. Where's my money? I want my money now. Right. And I can see it from Monique's perspective where she's like, look, I've been trying to tell you people that they are scammers. These people are trying to get over. Here is a perfect example of him, you know, taking advantage of somebody else that's not me. Will you believe me? And so I think that's all she's trying to say. And so here's the thing about that. Now, I don't see anything wrong with what Monique did about not wanting to go back out and promote the movie Mm -hmm. for more money. Mm -hmm. 
Now, here's the thing about that also. I also know that when you when I put things out, when I work for something on my own, when I put out my projects, mm-hmm. I'm the one on the ground putting that project into people's hands. Mm-hmm. I'm the one talking to people. Mm-hmm. I'm the one, hey, have you heard this? Have you heard that? Mm-hmm. Have you read have you read have, have you read my, my papers here? Have you mm-hmm. read my articles there? Yeah. I put that stuff in your hands. So if I create a project and my, my fingerprints are on that project. I'm going out to do it. You don't have to pay me mm-hmm. to work for myself. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, she didn't want to do that. She, she wanted more money to go promote a project she's in. And if it didn't do well, she would still blame it on other people. Mm. Now, that's my problem with that. Okay. So that's my issue with that. So, so the whole Lee Daniels situation, Lee Daniels could be a jerk. Lee Daniels could be a schemer and a scammer. Mm-hmm. But that situation, I think he could go either way. What what could go either way? His think, situation with Damon? No, no, I'm or... talking about the Monique situation. Okay. I think it could go either way. Yeah. One, she should have got paid more money because she's an artist and she and for her to go out and work more, what she's doing, mm-hmm. you should pay her. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, this is your work. This is your art. So if you want it to be promoted, you better get out there and promote it. Mm-hmm. So I think that is just a, a, a fight of opinions at that situation. Yeah. Now, back over here to doggone Dame Dash. Mm-hmm. Dame Dash is in the total right. And because mm-hmm. he gave Lee Daniels $2 million, invested $2 million into Lee Daniels. Yes. Not necessarily for a single project or whatever yeah. it was. It wasn't for Precious, but he he donated, he, he put $2 million investment mm-hmm. into it. Dame Dash took that money and then Precious came out, mm-hmm. won awards and mm-hmm. all these things. And he still hasn't paid back the, yeah. the $2 million mm-hmm. that he took from Dame Dash. Yeah. And he's had how many projects after that? He's had Empire. Yeah. Like, he's been doing big things that yeah. have been successful. So I don't understand what the hang up is. What was very upsetting to me was he seemed very meek and taken aback when Damon approached him and he wasn't in his face about him, about Damon confronting him about the money. But when it came to Monique speaking up, he was like, Oh, Monique, she needs to shut up. So I, I didn't like that because I was like, well, why didn't you tell, why you, didn't you, you tell Damon to see, shut up? See, see, um, why are you going to tell her? You to don't remember up? who Dame Dash was. <laughs> That's the thing. You got to remember who Dame Dash was. <laughs> Where he came from. Yeah. You got to remember yeah. Dame Dash still came from the street. Yeah. Dame Dash was a fighter in the street. Yeah. He, he used to do uh, fight clubs mm-hmm. in, in New York. He was, Dame Dash was out there. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he knows better. Yeah. Now, now Monique, little hood and yeah. little crazy, but Monique know better. Mm-hmm. Dame Dash doesn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. And and Dame Dash will go at him even for just plight of ego. What do you mean? You feel like if it was a hundred thousand dollars, he would still come at yeah, him the same Dame, way? That's not how Dame okay. Dash is. It's about the principle, right? Yeah. And so because it's two million, Dame yeah. Dash made two million on his last movie. Really? He did. It was I was crazy, but he did make two million on wow. his last movie. Wow. And made, it, actually, he made a bigger profit than that, but. It, he made money on oh his last project. Oh my goodness! Project. And it, it's funny as we're as we're talking about him, it makes me think about we had a conversation about his transaction with Jay Z and Rockefeller mm-hmm. because this whole time I was under the impression that Jay Z did some backroom deal and snatched it from underneath him. But correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. You were saying that it was a mutual. Yeah. It was a mutual parting. Yeah. Okay. Now he said not not to say that it was it was amicable on both sides and everybody mm-hmm. can't walk away happy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was he signed the contract sure. and went on with it. It wasn't like he was he was backroomed into anything. Wow. I, okay. I think I'm gonna just have to do some research on my own about like why he decided to walk away. Well, first of all, he sold half the company. They 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 uh, sold half the company. Mm-hmm. And after that, now they own fifty percent of the company, and then Jay Z out owned him and then bought him out the rest of it. Oh, okay. So, I mean, with the situation they went through and what they did, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it was amicable. As as could be. Yeah, as could be. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I hope everybody gets their money rightfully. If that means everybody has to go back to court or what, I don't know. But well, he's already supposed to pay him 5% of all his future projects. Wow. Or something like that. I don't know if that's an actual yeah. fact, but I heard that. But he has to pay. 
Wow. And he still hadn't paid. Yeah. But you see how Damon made that kind of a deal? Monique, why you didn't make that kind of a deal? Why didn't you make a deal regarding that project where it's like, hey, yes, you pay me $25,000 or I think it was $50,000, whatever the amount was, pay me X amount of money right now. And then once the project comes out, I get X percentage of the profits or some, I make some kind of a right. deal. But see, the thing is that that wasn't the contract that Dame had with him. Oh. That came from the court. Oh. Yeah, that was the court. Okay, okay, and okay. And the problem with Monique making that deal is because Sydney is her manager. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Sydney might have been that dude on the street corner. You know yeah. Saying? He might have been able to, might be able to eyeball an eight ball. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He might have been that guy. You know, he could probably do that. But yeah. Hey, it's he a different know, game. He, these boardrooms are different places. Yeah. And you can't go in there. You're not LeVar Ball. Everybody's not LeVar Ball. Mm-hmm. So these boardrooms are different places. Yeah. And you might want to find a different manager or and use him as a manager's assistant or something. Or get an assistant who could really do, who could just talk in Sydney's ear, tell him what to do. Mm. Something. Yeah. Because I think a lot of her deals and a lot of her situations are going the way they are because she doesn't have proper management. Yeah. Mm. You, you can't go into that world without without all your tools yeah mm, that's unfortunate so yeah that's so unfortunate i wonder where she's gonna go what she's gonna do next but we talked about nobody's fool last time we did. You still you still not gonna see it wait, who wait, who's in nobody's fool oh, Ty's Tyler Perry. yeah no i won't i won't see it oh my goodness i won't see it <laughs> yeah, the only way i'm telling you right now the only way that i see it is if I find one of the review podcasts that I listen to, mm-hmm. review it and says it's worth listening to. Wow. Because it's not something I'm about to get up and run to go see. Well, you, we, you don't have to run. You can walk. I won't walk. You can walk. You got to come to me. The four of us could go on a double <sighs> date. Like, come on. I wouldn't want to go home to the movie then. I'll meet y'all at dinner. <laughs> I, I really, I really wouldn't want to see it. I, I really have no interest. No in desire at, at all. all. Wow. At all. It's going to be funny. It it's going to be cliche, but it's still going to yeah, be funny. Yeah, that's why I won't like it. It's okay. going to be so cliche. Okay. It's not going to be, and it's going to be so little nuanced that it's going to be insane. <laughs> Everything's going to be right in your face. <laughs> you know I mean, it, and like. Because what's that movie with Tika Sumter and Ice Cube and Kevin Hart? Oh, Ride Along. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminds, it, it's giving me nah. a Ride Along vibe. Uh, nah. You're not no, getting a ride along vibe. I'm totally all. getting a ride along vibe. I'm wondering why I'm not getting a ride along vibe because Ice Cube is a different type of person. Mm-hmm. Ice Cube is so layered mm-hmm. because he is the Ice Cube, the thug that mm-hmm. we knew growing up. Mm-hmm. He is, um, was it? Uh, the, the barbershop ice mm-hmm. cube. Yeah, he's the Friday. Friday ice cube. Just are we all there yet? Layers. So we mm-hmm. are we there yet? Ice cube. You got to <laughs> think about that. The father type ice yeah. cube. Yeah, and so you got to look at all those things, and that is a layered individual. Mm-hmm. We don't have those layers with Tika Sumter yet. Okay. We have one layer with Tika Sumter, mm-hmm. and that's what we get. We're, we're gonna no, do. at least two, because she'll do the serious drama, like the have and the have nots. Mm-hmm. And that movie about the Obamas that she was in. Right. So that's the serious one. And then she has she's stepping into the comedic role, Where? like with with Ride Along and with Nobody's Fool. She's, she's in Ride in Along the, for a blink. I could have sworn it was long because wasn't she the sister that he was that Kevin was trying to date? He no, he married. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, she's in the very beginning uh-huh. and she's in the very end. She's not in that movie. But she's still attached but to... She's not, but her role isn't... like, And even her role she's in, the comedy isn't from her. The comedy is from the Ice others, Cube. Yeah. And so she's in a comedic space, but she's mm-hmm. not the comedian. It's a start. It's a start. Right. <laughs> and she's the, she's the Loretta Divine. Like when Loretta... You know, I can't say in that show because Loretta was hilarious in that show. But um, I don't even know who, who I can think Compare of. Compare her to. Right. Because okay. she was just this character that was there. Yeah. And it wasn't really... It had no real... Comedy around it. Okay. And I cannot she's just think a filler. of I cannot think of Wow, you really just calling this girl a filler. She's Denise. Huxtable? Yes. But then that's when not in Living Color, a different world started as her spinoff. Okay, I got the wrong sister. What's the oldest? Sister? Oh, the oldest I was gonna say Charmaine. Charlene? 
She's the oldest sister. Sister, yeah. yeah. She's the oldest sister, sister who is not funny, who had yeah. no space in that whole yeah. TV show. Yeah. The only funny part about it was her husband. Yeah, and then when they had the twins, oh. But even they weren't funny. But I mean, the the, the comedic that was a comedic show. Yeah. And the the funny part was the 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 anxiety filled husband. Yeah. And and so that's who she that's who. The comedy was yeah, centered that's who around. Tika Sumter is okay. Tika Sumter was that role. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe she could branch out. I don't want to think that she's gonna be no pigeon, no 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 no. Pigeonholed. no, no. I think she. I think she definitely has a way to get there. Yeah, tight cast. That's there, the word I was looking for. And she will yeah. get there, but I yeah. think at this point, right now, she's just not there. Okay. And when she does get there, amazing. Yeah. But she hasn't had the role, and this might be her breakout role. Exactly. But again, we don't have the layers, so it won't be as good as a ride along. <sighs> it might not even be good as a ride along two. I didn't see that one. It might be better than ride along three. They're putting, There's putting a together three? right now. They're putting a the ride along three together. Wow. I guess now he's going to actually be a detective. I, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, that's interesting. That I'll wait till it comes out on Netflix. <laughs> that yeah, I'll just I'll just wait till that comes out on Netflix. Right. Yeah, yeah. Typecast. That was the word I was. I said pigeonholed, but typecast was the word that I was thinking about. But I'm glad I just said Sandra. It. Yes, Sandra. I was close. I said yes. Charlene. That's not close. Sandra <laughs> and she got married. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. To Elvin. <laughs> Yes. Elvin Tripodo. <laughs> That's it. Wow. Yeah, Sandra. We need to go to like a trivia night. <laughs> I know. And I want to I want to be like I want I want to find like some hard ones like what what apartment number did Martin live in? I don't what know. What is Oh, I, I like, don't know. What, what is? I was like I don't know. I've been watching so much Sherlock Holmes that now the 221B it, that's yeah. that's the number that stuck it that's the apartment number that's stuck in my head right now. Plus, you can't ask a question like that. You got to be like, what floor did bro man live on? Because do you go by what he said or the number of fingers that he put up? Wow. <laughs> Seriously, that's a, that I feel like, because yeah. I want to say that game that's like cards against humanity. That, that's, that's, no, but, that's, no, but there's one that's like black card or something like that. I don't know about that one. Oh, okay. Well, but, they have a set where they'll ask you about black pop culture. Mm. And I feel like one of those questions, like, oh, that okay. that's the type of question that they would ask you. Like, what floor did bro man live on? Mm -hmm. But then it's like, what do you go by? <laughs> do you go by what he said, the fifth floor? Or by how many fingers he put up, which was actually four. So, you know. They don't yeah. ever say what apartment he lived in on here. They don't say it on here. Oh, okay. I feel like you probably have to watch. They say it was the Garden Court Apartments. It was not on the first floor. No, Garden Court Apartments is the name. Oh, like the name of the complex. Yeah, okay. Court Apartments. When you said garden, usually they'll use that to spice up that it's on the first floor. Yeah. Yeah. At 2900 East Jefferson Avenue. Where you get that address from? That's what they get. That's what they put on here. Oh my goodness. But I don't know anything else about it. Yeah. Like I would ask the question, what was the color of the warehouse that Tommy worked in? He didn't have a job. But he used to say he worked at a warehouse that was oh. downtown. It started off white, but they painted it black. Okay. I remember that I for some reason. I don't I remember no that. I only remember that episode where they were selling off the bachelors for dates, mm -hmm. and Martin thought that Tommy was a stripper for a living. That's the, that's what I remember. <laughs> Everybody has their own theory about what Martin, what what Tommy did for yeah. a living. Do you have a theory? Tommy ain't got no job. Tommy had a job. <laughs> he, maybe he worked for like the FBI or something. Yo, you know what I think Tommy did? This is my theory. Tommy did private security. Mm. He did private security for like real big stars. He, yeah, and so he because, couldn't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so he couldn't talk about what he did mm -hmm. and nobody knew where he was. Because the reason I say that is because remember at near the end of the show was Martin's birthday mm -hmm. and he had all those, and Tommy put together a video, had all those, those different celebrities. stars, those celebrities. Oh, wow. Y'all, I was like, yo, Martin, that's what he does. He, he's into some private security. I like that. Yeah. I'm going with that theory. I'm Anytime that's somebody, I like that. That's I'm going. I'm, I'm going with that theory. Okay, well, speaking of a of an artist of from the from the nineties, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been hearing about the trouble that R. Kelly has been has been getting into lately. I don't know if we need to. We don't go need to. Yeah, we don't need to go into everything that yeah, R. Kelly has done. But, but you, if you are not living under a rock, you know the mess that he has got himself into. But this segment is more about Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. 
and her openly supporting him several times on her show. And she shared with her audience, and it, it was she shared in a weird way. She, she was just like, oh, I know so much about him, things that I'll take to my grave, mm -hmm. you know, but let me tell you this. And so, yeah. and so she was sharing that he's illiterate, that he doesn't know how to read, right. he can't that. write. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, we yeah, knew that. I, we heard Cap and that came out a while back. And that he can't do basic arithmetic. And she was basically being sympathetic. She was just like, you know, here's, here's somebody that he's struggling with this big portion and she wasn't for the whole mute R. Kelly movement that a lot of radio stations were right. doing. And basically it just means that they were not playing his music. Now, her tune changed when her advertisers threatened to pull their ads from her show, which right. meant, hey, you're about to get canceled. Right. You're about yeah, to get canceled. Think, now, how, how do you, how, what do you think about that situation? I think that she flails with the wind. When she was on radio, because I used to listen to her on WBLS 107.5, mm. <laughs> she stuck to her guns. She was the type of person that she would come after celebrities and she would ask them, <laughs> she would ask them questions, the hard hitting questions that People want to know, mm -hmm. and she stuck to her guns. Whereas now, because of the platform that she's on, she has to bend to her advertisers and to her audience members. Because I remember that one time where she made that statement about HBCUs not being important, mm -hmm. and like, why do we still have them? And then Roland Martin had to let her know, like, hey, those still serve a purpose for underprivileged people, right. especially those who can't afford to go to other PWIs. Like, they yeah. it, they serve a purpose. Like, they have a reason. And so she she does a lot of flip-flopping right now. Right. And so here's my situation. So I've never been a fan of Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in New York, so I never listened to her on the radio. Mm -hmm. I didn't. That's not what I had. Um, so for me, I don't have I don't have that like that a connection. Me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with the mute R Kelly situation, I see it from two different places. Like you you can understand and then disagree with radio stations, right? Choosing to not right. play his now, music. I okay. Why you want to go out and mute somebody because of the things that they've done mm -hmm. and I have their, their 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 product out there? Mm -hmm. But it's like the same thing I said with with Bill Cosby. The, the art that they create is not a representation of them. It's the representation of the art. Okay. So the Cosby show got so many people through so many different things. Mm -hmm. A whole generation of black students went to HBCUs mm -hmm. because of the Cosby show in a mm -hmm. different world. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it raised us. Mm -hmm. um, those shows like that. So now that we have insight to what Bill Cosby did, does that take anything away from the message he put out? Okay. So the same thing with, with R. Kelly. Not saying that R. Kelly had that same type of message, mm -hmm. but I think we're on a slippery slope. If we start saying that this person did that, so we need to remove all their music from iTunes and from the radio and from Spotify and not have it accessible, we're persecuting the art. We're not persecuting the person. So you think that there is a separation between the art and the artist? Yes. Um, we we have to agree with that. Well, the reason why we have to agree with that be is because of all the art that we have in the world. Mm -hmm. We have we and we call beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have um, um, monuments built. We have um, what am I trying to say? Monuments built. We have music and paintings from people who created who created rap and mm -hmm. and just create were terrible people. Mm -hmm. I'm stuttering today for some reason. They were terrible people, mm -hmm. but we still view their work as art. Mm -hmm. So why does that change when we're not talking about a 200-year-old painting or or music written by Bach? Because that's not what's relevant right now. That's not what's relevant. Right? the same thing. But it's not relevant. Like People are not going to care about what's not in their face. R. Kelly is in their face right now. Bill Cosby was in people's faces. Right. And so... If you, if buying their art, if watching their art, if listening to their art helps to benefit them, puts money in their pockets, it says, I support what you do. 
as a person. You can stop the money flow to the person. You can find ways around that. You can stop. You can stop monetarily supporting a, a, a company. Can stop monetarily supporting an artist. Mm-hmm. They can do that. But now, what I'm saying is that by trying to get rid of this art, so the Cosby Show is not on there. It's not yeah. on syndication anywhere. Yeah. The only place you're probably gonna find it is on Amazon for an extravagant price. Mm-hmm. Oh, like the box set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, in box sets. Mm-hmm. But again, that raised us. That brought made us who we are today. That yeah. type of show. A whole group of Americans, yeah, and people outside of America even mm-hmm. watched that show, and it raised them. Yeah. So, <clears throat> are you? Are, are we bad people because we watched this show that was created by a bad person? I wouldn't go as far as to say that you're a bad person, but I would say that I would liken it to boycotting. There are some people that disagree with the views of the CEO of Hobby Lobby and the Mm -hmm. CEO of Chick-fil-A where they're not for homosexual marriage. Right. And there are people that don't support those businesses anymore because their views don't align with the that particular consumer. So to me, it makes sense if you as a consumer now want to make that decision to not support someone that doesn't agree with your views like you have that you have that right to say hey i don't agree you're not gonna get my money right but see that's taking it out of their hands that's by saying that okay i don't want this anymore so i'm not going to support it Mm -hmm. the 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 muting of these artists and canceling of these artists is saying that i'm deciding for you as well okay you have no right to listen to this music you have no right to watch this tv show okay that's where I'm coming from because it. Eh. <laughs> yeah, I, we're gonna we're gonna disagree on this. Yeah, and I understand that. But yeah. I just feel that if I'm going to buy the box sets of mm-hmm. the Cosby Show and still show them to my kids mm-hmm. and let them come up with that, mm-hmm. because that is what helped raise me. That mm-hmm. is that um, Family Matters, um, mm-hmm. all the the Fresh Prince, because it showed positive black people on television. Yeah. We have been requesting that and crying for that, right? Yeah. In this day and age, mm-hmm. reading any good books on the news, don't play. No, <laughs> but like it just went like. Um, so we're, we're right now we're thinking about in this day and age of all these shows that we want to see mm-hmm. our people on. Yeah. We have Blackish. We have we have we had Scandal. We have uh, these shows that have black people in them. Mm-hmm. But we did have these shows before. Mm-hmm. They were pillars of art of everything. People, you know, somebody right now. Who would make a Martin joke? Yeah, if you were with them, mm-hmm. and that is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that connection. That connection to something. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to still show that to my kids. And I was never an R. Kelly fan like that. I might have two songs that I really, really like by R. Mm-hmm. Kelly. And in that situation, I mean, I'm still listening to those songs okay. because I don't have to support what he does or what he did mm-hmm. to listen to that music. Okay. All right. That's just me. Do you. Do <laughs> you, Bobo. Do you. <laughs> and so on the theme of do you, Erica Campbell, who is a female gospel artist, lately she has been criticized for her pink weave. <laughs> she was at the Essence Festival. I don't know if she performed or not, but she had a booth. And her and her hairstylist, Vernon Martin, they are establishing a new hairline. So it's going to, you know, be weaves, wigs, bundles, all of that stuff. And obviously to promote this new product, she's wearing it. And this particular hairstyle that she had, it was like a baby soft pink weave. And I'm throwing in there what she had on too, because apparently this was a problem. She had on a fatigue jumpsuit and there were people that were for it they thought she looked fabulous they supported her with her new hairline and then you had people that were attacking her saying that as a christian as a person in the spotlight who is supposedly representing christ she was in the wrong and i'm just gonna say i I think that that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I really do think it's ridiculous. I don't understand how her hair color says that she's not a good representative of Christ. And people were throwing around scripture. They were using the scriptures that when Peter was talking to 
the Colossians, he was talking about, you know, the women need to dress modestly. They can't wear beads in their hair. They can't do all these different things. And that's what gets me when people take things out of context, out of context. They don't understand that at that time, the, the church was a mess. The church was a mess. And Paul, I think I said Peter, but it's actually Paul. Paul was writing to them to let them know that there needs to be order in the church. So if you're going to be gossiping, we need to stop that. You had men and women that were wearing each other's clothes. There were like different um, like bands that they had that would let you know whether it was a male or a female garment. And he was writing to tell them, like, listen, the church is a mess. Y'all need to stop all of this foolishness and you need to focus on why we're here to worship and praise God. Yeah, and the Corinthians were, were out there. Exactly. So he's writing to these churches to tell them what their purpose is, what they're doing wrong, and how they need to fix it. And when people were taking these scriptures and throwing it at her, telling her that, you know, she is dressing like a prostitute and she's not representing Christ well, I'm just like... Ugh. And it's not like she was she was out flaunting any skin or... <laughs> all she had was pink hair. And, and who says what how you have to look to glorify the Lord. She can be who she is and and still glorify the Lord. It's, it's crazy that people try to put Christians in this box, and they also misrepresent Christianity in a way that really annoys me, mm -hmm. that, that there is this, this non-acceptance of everybody. Yeah. And I hate that. I say let her do her. Yeah. She can wear the hair she wants to wear. Yeah. She can wear the clothes she wants to wear. She is not doing anything wrong. Yeah. If you saw her walking down the street, she still looks modest. Yeah, exactly. It's not like she was bearing herself out and, you know, exposing herself. She was covered up. She had on a, a jumpsuit and it was just that her hair was colored mm -hmm. and I didn't I'm like and she has worn numerous different hairstyles where the ends were blonde or red and I was just like so now the fact that it's pink now it's a problem I I don't understand because pink is a is a shade of red so <laughs> so what's the problem and she has gotten flack before too because on one of her album covers she wore this white body con dress and so and body con just means that it was really fitted and you couldn't even really tell because the dress was white and the background was white too right. so it was blending in and people were attacking her because she's a curvy woman mm -hmm. and people were attacking her, telling her that, you know, she's exposing herself and the, the same things that they're saying to her now that she's not a good representation of Christ. And I'm just like, but she's not exposed. She's not exposing herself. She's right. not exposing herself. And all of her lyrics are about Jesus and about him being our savior. I don't, I just, I don't get it. And what her and her sister are doing they're they're reaching an audience that the old traditional church is not reaching right they're reaching that audience and i'm not saying that they need to now smoke and drink because it clearly says you're not supposed to get into an inebriated state but you got to meet people where they are right. and so if wearing big earrings or wearing colored hair or delving into R&B and rap, but using the lyrics and the words of Jesus Christ is going to meet people where they are. I personally feel that that's a good thing. I agree. Yeah. I personally think that that's a good thing. I definitely agree. Yeah. And so Erica, yeah. I thought that you looked amazing. And if I wasn't on a hair growth journey that's simplified, I would definitely buy from your hairline. <laughs> I would definitely buy from your hairline. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, it's, I can't even say that because we're on here sharing our opinions. Right. But I just disagreed with people that were coming for her. Yeah. I, I, I understand. And like I said, everybody has their own opinion. Yeah. And this is our opinion. Yeah. And if the people don't like it, they can walk away. Yeah. They can, they can talk to us. They can ask us questions about our opinion. We're yeah. here for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that people 
confuse their opinions as fact mm. at some times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and when you when you get when you start to blur that line, mm-hmm. you get to a place to where you don't make sense. <laughs> because I don't care mm-hmm. about your opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't care about what you feel that I should do in my life. Mm-hmm. I care about what myself, my wife, and my God have come together with and decided what we're going to do. Yeah. I ain't got time for what yeah. you care about. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so get in the get on get in the boxes. Get in the DMs. Get on get on your blogs. Get mm-hmm. on your, your pages and say anything you want. Yeah. Because it's not going to stop my blessing. It's not mm-hmm. going to stop my glory. It's not going to stop my testimony. Yeah, you can't take away my favor. Right. That's what we learned today. So, <laughs> Let her do her. And, yeah. Or don't let her do her. But just know that you sitting here griping and mm-hmm. arguing and fussing about everything that she's doing. Yeah. You're just wasting your time because you have no control over her mm-hmm. or her life. Yeah. Amen. So we're going <laughs> to sit here and say this is going to be the end of the podcast today. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about everything we could. Like we said, this was a short, crazy week. <laughs> no, you said it was a week week. Yeah, it was a week week. <laughs> and it was crazy. There's nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing happened. As well, a lot happened in politics, but we try to stay away from politics on this yeah. show. Yeah. It's not somewhere that we want to go at this point. Yeah. So, but in entertainment, it was a slow week. Yeah. Uh, last but week we tried. Was, I think we did a good job. We tried to job. put some things together. <laughs> so we want to thank everybody for rocking with us. If you want to... Uh, we want to let you know that you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter at For the Culture. Yeah. You can find it. Um, also, you can look for Mecca Entertainment, which is the parent company of this podcast, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Ali is not on social media. Womp womp. But if you have <laughs> any questions for me, you can find me at The Conscious Gent on both Twitter and in- Instagram. That's T H E underscore C O N S C I U S underscore G E N T on both Twitter and Instagram. We want to thank y'all for listening. Thank you guys. And we will see y'all next week. Actually, it'll just be me next week. Bullet, 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 right bullet, now. bullet. Peace. <laughs> Take a picture, man. Hit a last longer. Hit a gas on it. Hit a dance on it. Take no chance on them, get the cash on them, flip it fast on them, take off the mask on them, show the world.